All right, June 9th, 2012. It's just part two of uh, debates ignored and uh, debate challenges ignored and uh, political waste of time in campaign materials, mailers, and so forth. What are the answers that we're really seeking? Do these candidates really talk about showing any of the real necessary changes that are needed on a, on a broad scale, a very wide scale, in order to put things back into the correct perspective and control? One of the big dangers is, for instance, let's use animal life as an example. When you have too many deers, you have too many certain types of animals in a certain area, the area becomes congested and in many cases even dangerous to the environment. Now man has the ability to do that with themselves. They multiply numbers and they continue to live in congested areas even though it's not really all that advantageous for them because they're bitching all the time. Complain about this, complain about that, complain about your neighbors, complain about crime, complain about it's just too many people in big cities. Now I know the answers and I hate to sound like a know-it-all, but I am. I do know all of the answers and I knew the answers years ago. But so long as people continue to ignore all of these situations, then it's just going to get worse and worse. You can't build and you shouldn't be building one business on top of another, on top of another, on top of another. There's just too many people. And when you get this kind of congestion, you also get too many mixed philosophies, too many mixtures of who thinks they have more rights than other people because certain classes of people have their affairs in order to live the life they think they're comfortable with but they aren't because they have complaints too but only at a different level whereas poor people have their complaints they're slapped and kept down and they are hurt continually by all of these factors. You saw it just a minute ago. Tons of political campaign material. I showed all the pictures and the, and the, uh, the ridiculousness of it all. At some point, they're not going to send any mailers out anymore. Everything will be done on, on some kind of internet thing. But even with that, you don't know the candidate. You don't know how well they are, how, how scholared they are. They may have graduated first in their class, but it doesn't mean that they're equipped with the capabilities, the knowledge, and the experience to really put wheels into motion that will change things, that will make it better for everyone. You can't make things better for everyone when you're beating them with a stick. And that's exactly what they did to me. That's exactly what they're doing to other people. And when children grow up in this kind of congested atmosphere, it gets worse because they start rebelling. But the rebellion is a subconscious thing. It is at a very, the very core of it is at the subconscious level. And no one, not even me, on this planet is master of their subconscious mind. They just aren't. I don't care who it is. Whether they claim they are, it's just nonsense. The Dalai Lama, the priest, senators, congressmen, people in CIA positions, NSA positions, secret ultra-intelligence agencies, that's all a bunch of lies. They really don't know the end result. This is what people should be concentrating on. The end result of what's going to happen from all of this. Now, sooner or later, there's going to be a day 
when all of you are going to realize that, you know, we have to do something about this. This is not right. This is not in its proper form. What proper form could this be? Are there two of me talking here? Or is it all your imagination? Special effects. What exactly are you really looking for? I had everything I wanted. Everything that was necessary to me to help me build my Shangri-La in the middle of nowhere in Colorado, I owned. I had it. It was a physical, it physically existed. All of the materials needed to start my projects out in the middle of nowhere. And then the city of Los Angeles purposely and prejudicially trapped me here. Attacking my possessions, attacking me wherever I want. No, I'm not the only one. There was a lady named Linda Maneri <coughs> who had eight or nine double-decker buses, like the kind you see in England, the big red ones. Very nice looking. Not trashy looking like my vehicles were. And they followed her around till they finally gave her a heart attack. I asked her daughter once, who lives up here in Chatsworth, if she could help me out while they were city was doing this crap to me. And she said, oh, no, I can't help anybody. You know, I don't want to attract anything that would attract the city to me. She learned a lesson from her mom. They just keep attacking you. So where does that leave me? Same place Linda Maneri? They murdered me, too. Murdered me in over a long period of time by interfering, impeding my life, and applying laws and regulations in, an, in a highly prejudicial fashion, in an extreme fashion, and it ended up destroying me. So here I am at either the library or Starbucks or wherever that can get the Wi-Fi signal doing these YouTube videos. Well, nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to care after I die. When I'm dead, I'm dead. Who's going to care? So, here we are. I believe that this is a reflection. It's being done by the, uh, probably by the window behind me. It's interesting how reflections happen. You can be sitting somewhere. They're not perfectly flat. They're always a touch at an angle. Because you can be standing here looking on the side, and you'll be going into the window where, you're, uh, where you are. So, where will we go with this? With all of these recordings, where and what benefit is it to anybody? It's no benefit to anybody. Except that there'll be a history of how many times my civil rights were violated. And these rights should never have been violated. No one's life should be violated to such an extreme that they're left with nothing. Where the color of law is used to rip off a person. I'm in trouble now. I have nobody I can borrow money from. And, why, and if I borrowed money, it's going to take me forever to pay it back because I'm, I'm going to be the rest of my life trying to catch up to hold on to whatever possessions I have because no one understands and no one cares. I have to leave here today and work all day today and probably till 9 tonight and all day tomorrow trying to get all of my storages uh, a little more organized when I really don't want to do that. I had everything in cars, trucks, and trailers 10 years ago to get ready to move. It's been 10 years of harassment right now. A whole decade has passed. I slept in cars, trucks. I slept on the street. I slept in parks. 
I, I was forced to sleep in all these places because they interrupted my life. I was in a house. They attacked me at the house. They made false police reports. There were so many attacks, slashed my tires, uh, even graffiti on my trucks in my own driveway. These people are nuts. And nobody cared. Nobody did a, anything about it. So am I supposed to have a positive opinion about this country? Absolutely not. Now, one of those people I showed you in the other tape recording, part one, one of those people and these brochures and stuff like that that they send in the mail, political stuff, help me, ever. So why should a person like me go and vote? Why should a person like me even listen to, listen to Democrats, Republicans, Independents, any of them? Or even to the human race? When my neighbor came to me in 2007 and wanted to borrow $4,000 from me and promised to pay me in 30 days, he never did, he didn't pay me. Oh, it's okay to, for me to look at the house I was in. It was junky looking house and he had a nice looking house and I loan him that money and then he screws me over. This, this is not a, a, a great country. It's an evil country full of so many inconsistencies and dangers. You have to watch every step that you do because you don't know when Something bad's going to happen. Now, one person who's in a well-off position of money has said, hey, here's some money. Why don't you just leave the country? Well, I would have with all of my stuff, but now you've taken everything from me, interrupted my life, destroyed it, so what am I supposed to do? I'm 12 minutes into a video where I'm actually asking people, all my 200 videos, if you see a person in pain and agony, offer to help them. Do something. I've had one person offer to help me. But she's on disability. I couldn't take any money for, from her. I can't do that. So here's all this stuff happening, and no one is helping. No one wants to. They don't care if you're homeless. They don't care if, you're, if they've taken your cars, your trucks, your boats, your motorhomes. They don't care. So fine. The next, next earthquake, if I happen to be still trapped here, I'm not helping one person. I don't care how bad off they are, and I don't care who it is. I'm not going to lift a finger. I'll say one thing. You want my help? Go to the bank and get some money, and I'll help you. They won't be able to because they're trapped under all of that debris and carnage. And I'll say, you can't get to the bank? Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I remember when I had rough time and I was asking for help and no one came and helped me. So you know what? Comes around, goes around. And it wasn't that I needed help all the time. It's just that I was being attacked where I needed help all the time. And it's by the city officials and authority figures I'm not a person who drinks, smokes, or do, dr does drugs. I don't do any of that stuff. And yet, that's what they did to me. And it's the absolute truth. And it takes more than 200 videos to get this point across. You just saw that letter from, alleged letter from Barack Obama using his letters to the president on YouTube as an opening to the letter. And it's not even written by him. It's written by... Democratic Party, campaign committee, whatever. And they're asking me for money? <laughs> That's like my neighbor asking me for money. Hey, if I give you money, are you going to help me re-resurrect re my bus, my trucks, my cars, all of my hobbies? Are you going to resurrect all that stuff? Are you going to rematerialize it? Are you going to make me a time machine where I can go back in time and know where the mistakes are, know when I'm going to be attacked so I can move out of the way or get out of there before I get attacked? No. That's impossible. None of you can do that. Since you can't do that, I'm not going to be able to help you when things go bad. And believe me, things are going to get a lot worse than you realize. And I don't care. I could care less. You can all suffer just like you made me suffer. That's the end of part two. And uh, I'll see if I'll do a part three later.